The color grading panel works at the event level to provide a sleek, powerful set of color grading and correction tools. To use the color grading panel, first add two or more clips to a new project. Click the first event to select only that one and so that you see its output in the video preview window. Click the color grading button in the timeline toolbar. The color grading panel opens at the bottom of the Vegas Pro window. Notice that the Video Scopes window also opens docked in the window docking area, next to the preview window. However, keep in mind that if you close the Video Scopes window while the color grading panel is open, it will not reopen the next time you open the color grading panel, since the panel remembers your window layout from when it was last opened, and adjusts to that layout when you next open it. If you open the color grading panel and the Scopes window does not also appear, open it manually. To see this, click the Close button on the Video Scopes tab. Click the color grading button to close the panel. Click the color grading button again to reopen it. This time the video scopes window does not open with the panel. To open it again, choose View, Windows, Video Scopes. Hold the control key and drag the video scopes window into the window docking area to dock it next to the video preview window. The color grading panel contains three sections and each section contains one or more tabs that lead to various tools and their controls. In the default configuration, the first section shows color wheels, the second, color curves, and the third shows various buttons. Notice that the first section contains several tabs in addition to the color wheels tab. Click the Input LUT tab. On this tab, you can add a LUT to the beginning of your color chain. While you can add any LUT file, typically this would be a camera LUT that correctly interprets the color space of the footage from your camera. Not every camera requires a camera LUT, but if yours does, apply that LUT here. To apply a LUT, click the Browse button. Navigate to the location in which you've stored your LUTs. Select your LUT from the list. I'll choose a sample LUT that will create an obvious change to my footage. Click Open. To bypass the LUT so you can compare your footage with it and without it, deselect and reselect the Enable button. To remove the LUT, click the Reset button. Click the Color Wheels tab. Here you can use the wheels and sliders to adjust the lift, gamma, gain, and offset values of your video. Remember, as with many other controls in Vegas Pro, hold the control key while you drag the thumb or any other control in the panel in order to limit your adjustments to much smaller changes. This is extremely helpful when you're making fine adjustments. Drag the gamma wheels thumb to the edge of the wheel toward the orange to create an obvious orange tint in your video. Drag the Gamma Control's Y slider to the right to change the color even further. As with most controls in Vegas Pro, you can double-click the thumb and the slider to reset them to their default values. Each wheel also has a reset button to set all controls for that wheel back to their defaults. Each of the wheels contains similar controls, so adjust them as you see fit to create a look that you like for your video. Click the Color Channels tab. This tab offers a different set of tools that provide control of lift, gamma, gain, and offset settings broken down by RGB color channels. Adjust the various sliders to change the colors in your video. Click the Input Output tab. Here you have levels controls and two independent controls to adjust saturation and exposure of your footage. If the color curves are not still visible, click the Color Curves tab in the second section. Here you can control the colors with a composite curve for red, green, and blue channels. For instance, to increase the contrast of your video, drag the handle, called the tangent, for the left curve down and to the right, and the tangent for the right curve up and to the left. You can also add new points to the curve. Double-click somewhere in the curve to add a new point. The new point has two handles. You can drag the point or the handles to see how these changes affect your video. Notice that when you change one handle, the other changes with it. Right-click the point and choose Lock Tangents to deselect that option. Now adjust one of the tangents and notice that the other does not move with it. This gives you greater control over the curve. You can add as many additional points to the curve as you need. Right-click the point you added a moment ago and choose Delete Point from the menu. You can also adjust curves individually for the three color channels. For instance, to turn the red channel curve on, select the red checkbox. To reset the curves, select the checkbox for each curve you want to reset and click the Reset button. A curve will not be reset if you have not selected its checkbox. You can use the curves to correct your white balance. You can do this manually, but for an automatic adjustment, click the Auto Adjust button under the White Balance heading. 
you can see how the tool automatically adjusts the various curves. Reset the curves again if you need to and make your final adjustments. Click the HSL tab. Here you can use the controls to adjust your hue, saturation, and luminance. If you want to quickly create a black and white clip, drag the saturation slider down to 0.0. .0. Click the Look LUT tab. These controls are the same as those you saw earlier, but here you would typically add a custom LUT that creates a certain look for your video, like a vintage film look or the iconic look of a particular Hollywood movie that you'd like to emulate. Finally, the Finishing tab provides various useful controls. Click the Bypass Color Grading button to bypass all of the adjustments you've made so far. Toggle this button on and off to compare your video before and after the adjustments you've made. Don't forget that if you leave the bypass on, your video will render without any of your adjustments. So click the Apply Color Grading button to bring your adjustments back before you render. We'll skip the next two buttons and come back to them later. Don't do this now, but if you want to remove all of your adjustments and start over, click the Reset All button. All controls will be set back to their defaults. You can export all of the color grading adjustments you've made as a LUT file that can then be applied to other events, tracks, and more in the same project or other projects. You can even use the LUT in any other software that supports cube files. We'll talk about exporting LUTs in detail in the LUT export tutorial video. To close the color grading panel, click the Exit button. All of your adjustments remain on your event whether the panel is open or closed. Click the color grading button again to reopen the panel. Now let's return to the two buttons we skipped. Click the Bezier Mask button. This opens the Video Event Effects window and gives us an opportunity to talk about an important point in addition to Bezier Masking. Notice that the Video Event Effects Windows chain contains two plugins, Color Grading and Bezier Masking. This enables you to quickly apply a mask to your color graded event and limit the color grading to just the masked area. We'll do that in a moment, but first let's talk about what's going on here. When you add color grading to an event as we've done in this tutorial, behind the scenes we add a color grading plugin to the chain. The color grading panel is then really just a different kind of interface for a plugin. That information can come in handy because it shows that you can combine any other effect with color grading in an event's effects chain, as we've done with Bezier masking here. It also means that when you want to export a LUT that contains not only changes in the color grading panel, but also additional effects from the chain, you can export that LUT at the event video effects chain level instead of directly from the color grading panel. This gives you even greater color grading and correction flexibility. See the Export LUT tutorial for complete procedures for exporting LUT files. If you want to use the Bezier mask you just added in order to limit the grading changes to just a certain portion of the video, Click Bezier Masking in the Effects chain. Adjust the mask to include just the portion you want to grade and click the Expand arrow to expand the general options. Select the Mask Effects checkbox. The color grading changes you've made now affect only the masked area. Now back in the color grading panel, click the Broadcast Colors button. Just as with Bezier masking, this adds the broadcast colors effect to the end of your event effects chain, and you can dial in whatever settings you need for your final delivery. Keep in mind that if you want to apply this effect to your entire project, it might be better to apply it at the track or even the video bus level. Still, you can easily add it to the individual events if you want to. When you're done with color grading on this event, close the video event effects window. Now keep your eye on the setting you changed in the color grading panel and select a different event on your project. Notice that the color grading settings change to reflect the values you set on this new event. If you've never set them for this event, all parameters are set to their defaults. Make an obvious change to one of the parameters. Now click back and forth between this event and the first one. Notice that the color grading panel updates to show the values of the selected event. Click away from any event to deselect all of them. With no event selected, the controls are still visible, but disabled. They will become available again as soon as you select any video event. When you're done with your color grading task, click the Exit button to close the color grading panel.